hits your eye like a bigger pizza pie. That's amore. When the world seems to shine like it had. Hey, thanks for joining me. Ciao. Today we're making puttanesca. Puttanesca is one of my favorite sauces. Has a long history in my marriage. Anyway, today I'm putting a little spin on it. I'm making puttanesca raw, which means instead of the canned tomatoes, whole tomatoes, I'm using heirloom tomatoes that are in season and very, very sexy, because everybody knows tomatoes are hot. So the first thing I'm gonna start doing is start dicing my tomatoes. Look at the color of this. I mean, if we eat with our eyes, we are in for an absolute feast. They look spectacular, and they actually taste like a tomato. How cool is that? A tomato tasting like a tomato. So what I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna start dicing this up. Okay, so we have our tomatoes diced. Look at that beautiful orange tomato and a red purple tomato. Looks absolutely amazing. Putting this in a bowl that my beautiful youngest daughter made for me. How cool is that? I mean, that's what food's about love and taking care of people. We have a little minced garlic, and then we have a little red onions. And I said, this recipe has a lot of history in my marriage, because I started making my, this dish for my wife when we first got married, and I could do no wrong. I could do evil, but I could do no wrong, because she said, as long as I made this sauce, we're in good shape. Two years into the marriage, she learns that one of the key ingredients of puttanesca are anchovies. And I knew it as soon as she passed me in the kitchen and she saw me chopping up the anchovies for this dish, I knew puttanesca was history in the family. You have to know when to pick your battles. We have a little capers here. They were in brine and they're rinsed. We have little Kalamata olives pitted and I have them. White vinegar, some salt to bring out all the flavors, and what that's going to do is also bring out the liquids from the tomato. So when we put it with the pasta, we're going to have a sufficient amount of juice. Black pepper, a little red pepper, let you know we're alive, and some extra virgin olive oil. Pecorino Romano cheese. And wine, oh, the wine, that's not for the dish. That's for the handsome chef. Handsome's debatable, chef's debatable, but the wine for me, that's not debatable. And we're going to mix the ingredients up and take a look at that. Take a look at these colors and everything that's going on in this dish. It's absolutely amazing. You could use it so many different ways. This is basically the cousin of the tomato topping that you see on top of bruschetta. So this is absolutely amazing. What I will do here, perfect. Take that tomato and I will put this in the refrigerator for two hours to get all the flavors to come together. Okay, just drain the spaghetti, put it in the bowl, and that's a bowl that my parents brought me back from Italy. So I got a bowl that my parents brought me back from Italy. I have my tomato here in a dish that my daughter made for me. I mean, can it get any better? This tomato topping, you don't have to use it over pasta. I don't know why you would, but you could put it over chicken, beef, salad, vegetables. I mean, it is so versatile. You can absolutely go crazy with this. So I'm putting that over the spaghetti. And then going to give it a nice toss. And do you see the colors in this bowl? Like I said, we eat with our eyes and our smell first, and then we get to taste it. I almost don't even have to eat this, I'll be satisfied. Ah, I know. People who know me, you know that's a lie. Okay, we got a little in the bowl here, a little more, a little Romano cheese. Here we go. Let's see what we got. A 
absolutely amazing. All the ingredients are so vibrant and pop out by themselves, but it becomes something really special when it's all together. So bon appetit, don't mind me, I'm just going to finish my dish. <laughs>